Ow! 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 Ladies, gentlemen, gamers, and fellow League of Legends lovers, you are my special. We are here for D time. AKA Patch Notes. It's been two weeks. Two weeks fly by. Such as the sands of our lives. Or sorry, no. The days of our lives. We are back once again with another Patch Notes review. Hopefully we can make this one a quick one because I have a lot of other stuff to do today. But I'm actually on time because I've been on my shit. Which is good. But anyway, we have a couple things to talk about that I know are in this patch today. We have the new pass coming out, but it's a little bit of a different pass. We have the $500 Ari skin coming out, and no, that's not a joke, and I already reacted to it on my YouTube, so you could go check that out. And we have, uh, I don't know, we'll see what else. But anyway, let's get right into it. I will be honest, because there is no patch out, I have not been on the Rift in a little bit, so I am a little out of touch as to what is happening, what is good, what is bad, but as always, we're going to give our best opinions anyway. And I know I say this every time, but I really mean it, and I'll say it again. We're going to try to get through this in a reasonable amount of time. So let's see. All roads lead to him. Oh, we already know who they're glazing. Immortalizing the GOAT himself, the greatest of all time, which is no exaggeration in this case. Welcome to the Hall of Legends. Vega! D time! Anyway, so, you know, no surprise when the Riot Games made the... um. What the fuck is it called? Hall of Legends, aka their Hall of Fame. They were saying, like, you know, we're going to vote, we're going to hold, like, panels, we're going to ask questions to people, we're going to see who's going to be the first one in. It's no surprise. I called it. I didn't even need to call it. Everyone knew it. Faker is absolutely the first one in the Hall of Legends. No shocker there. Now, the big thing is, and I don't know if they're going to do it for every single one, but so far the precedent that's been set with the Hall of Legends is, number one, they're getting a documentary because that's what's happening with Faker. Number two, they're getting their own event, because that's what's happening with Faker, and that's going to be tied into the pass that has the 100 tiers and uh, has a LeBlanc skin and a whole bunch of other esports Faker-related stuff. And number three, they're getting their own skin, which in this case is the newest rarity skin. It is actually above ultimate. And again, I made a whole video describing what's going on with this, how I feel and stuff, but to kind of give you a little TLDR rundown, Essentially, they put a lot of effort, as they should, into this skin because it's above an ultimate skin in terms of rarity. But in terms of price, it blows the ultimate out of the fucking water. It is... And there's different types, right? There's a regular Ari skin, and then there's, like, an advanced Ari skin. And I say regular as in, like, as if it's normal. But the regular Ari skin is, like, $200-ish. I think $200, $300. And then the advanced one, which thankfully includes the past, that's, like, I think $15 with the leblanc skin is gonna be about 500 uh, excuse me now there's a lot of bells and whistles to it but essentially a lot of legendaries and a lot of ultimates samira have gone down in quality in my opinion imo and this new faker skin you know with all of the bells and whistles faker ari skin is really good but it doesn't justify the price so we're kind of at the two odd ends of the spectrum here where number one the current stuff that's supposed to be purchasable by the majority of people is getting worse and then anything that's actually good is overpriced to all shit so we are truly in the dark dimension and so far you know even with the passes they've been nerfing the league passes too to give less and less better rewards instead of capsules they're giving less instead of grab bags they're giving less or just changing it who knows right but things have been getting worse and i don't see them getting better we have the fucking 200 dollars chromas that have come out and those aren't going away anytime soon because the data they've gotten is basically showing like, yeah, there are whales who will pay for this. Surprise, surprise. They're going kind of the gotcha route. But either way, it's sad. But, uh, you know, so far the present has been set that hopefully the next skin that comes out, hopefully we'll give enough feedback. Now, this is the sad part where with all the feedback that we're going to give of how much we don't like the Faker skin being $500, even Faker himself questioned like, wow, why is it so expensive, right? He has control over how the skin is, what it looks like, this, this, and that. He has input, but he has no input over the price. So I really hope they listen to the feedback and they lower it, but most likely they might not because it is going to sell because it is faker. Now, I think if they try this shit again and it's with some, like, pro that's not faker, aka anyone else, I don't know if they'll get away with it. I think they'll get away with this, this first time because of faker, but aside from that, I really hope they don't. And I really hope Riot Rise wisens up and they don't include this type of shit. Now, at the end of the day, it is all cosmetic. And I did say this in my video too, but 
you know, it really doesn't matter, but it really leaves a bad taste in a lot of people's mouths, especially because you can't get it from crafting. But either way, that would massively devalue the skin anyway because it's $500, but that's good. It should not be $500 fucking dollars. But again, there should be stuff that is, I think, whale priced. I think there should be some stuff for whales, but it's a, it's a tough thing because I don't fully hate the idea of having something because, again, it's all cosmetic at the end of the day, but it's a very curious thing i'm not fully against it i'm mostly against it even though i don't really care about ari i just want the quality of the skins we have now to get better but and i i you know i'm really thinking of the csgo treatment where that's a player market so the knives and the fucking op skins are priced thousands of dollars that's because they are so rare they are random to get but it's player priced at that point which is a little bit worse because it's obviously more expensive but you know it's all a give and take at the end of the day i'm not too angry about it but i just I think it's a slippery slope, and they're going to go downhill with this even more. But either way, now that we got that little tidbit out the way, I won't have to say that later on, let's get into the patch. So, welcome to patch 14.12. We've got some larger changes to Nefiri and Aatrox. Nefiri, I like. Aatrox, we'll see. Follow-up changes to some champs and runes like Cork, Blitz, and First Strike. And finally, some changes to smoothen the build path of items like Lord Doms and Static Shiv. I feel like Static sucks ass. We've got something cooking for Arena. We're changing it up so everyone can get their own ban now. Oh, wow. Okay. That's pretty interesting. That's going to shake some things up. But anyway, we also just dropped our latest dev update, which I also have to react to probably right after this. So we're going to see that. And they talk about Arena, Vanguard's rollout, which was not as smooth as expected. Esports, updates, Arcane, oh boy, and more. And with Arcane comes, uh, you know, uh, Mel Medarda's mom. The Noxian, the Noxian meat woman, so we'll look out for that too. After Aurora, who already has a lot of pictures of her online. But either way, three cost reroll is back in TFT, but we don't care about that. Anyway, here are the new skins. You know, we'll we'll go over those at the end, but there's actually one I was a little surprised about. I didn't, I didn't expect that one. But anyway, Hall of Legends. So basically, this is the Hall of Fame. Every year, LOL Esports will induct a pro player into the Hall of Legends to honor their achievements with the sports and the game. Players are chosen by an independent voting panel of esports industry veterans, I wish we knew who they were, and experts from every region, who select players based on criteria, including international births, international... Basically, they're saying, you know, how cool they are, how much they actually contributed to the game, yada, yada, yada. Anyway, this year, we're proud to welcome Lee Faker sang -hyuk. I probably butchered that, but I tried my best. As the first inductee into the Hall of Legends, like I said, surprise, surprise, Faker's being recognized because this game is his bitch, as it should be. For more than 12 years, Faker's has shown incredible dedication to the game and sport. That is an understatement. This guy lives and breathes the game almost as much as, uh, not, not Tyler One. Tyler One almost does as much as him. As the mid laner for T1 and only T1, Faker has been long known for his technical press and his ability to make game-changing plays, which is true. And it's earned him the moniker, the Unkillable Demon King. Very Asian, but still very cool. His individual skill and in-game leadership has led the teams to numerous victories, having earned 10 LCK titles, 2 MSI titles, and 4 World Championships. Like I said, I think no one will do what Faker did. If someone does what Faker does, in the time frame that he's done it, and beats him in the time frame, I will be shocked. I don't think anyone else can get to that level of what he's done with the given time now if they compete longer than him and they get more championships sure right obviously you give anyone more time they could do more but to do it either faster at the same time as he did i think is nearly impossible this guy's a fucking animal but uh yeah let's keep going we're celebrating the hall of legends with an in-game event which will include an event pass that will take you on a journey through faker's career highlighting his pivotal moments aka the zed play achievements and more i hope they include the flip that he did at, at worlds too or the little role he did you can earn and purchase commemorative cosmetic items, collections, and skins themed after the Demon King himself. And that's where the Ari skin comes in. Whoa, look at it. It's so hot. And it's Ari too, so you know it's going to sell like hotcakes. It's Ari and Faker, the tag team duo. So I, I don't doubt it, it will sell, but it really, oh God, I really wish it didn't. Anyway, the Middle Eastern server is open, so all of the Middle Eastern people can go there now. Anyway, let's go over Aatrox. Uh, I don't really know much about Aatrox. I feel like Aatrox isn't doing too hot, but again, I really, really don't know. So let's take a look. Health regen growth decreased, armor growth increased, da 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 da. Our goal with these changes is to turn Aatrox to a successful heavy frontliner who deals a lot of damage. Not a tank, not even a juggernaut. So they want him to do damage and they don't want him to be an assassin. So they want him to scale off health, hopefully, because that's what they're saying. 
They want to ramp up his self-healing, even though there's a lot of nerfs to it. Coming at a small cost to his damage. Okay. This should result in slightly less E-healing overall, but more from his passive and Sundered Sky. Okay, cool. So they're telling me what to build. So his regen's going down. His armor growth is going up. His E-healing is going flat, but also gaining bonus health scaling, which is pretty good. So again, it's incentivizing certain builds. They're really restricting Aatrox here, which is what they do when uh, they want you to play the game a certain way. Umbral Dash's healing is no longer increased during Royal Ender, which is sad. And then the increased healing overall is getting Giga buffed in the ult. I think Aatrox is probably going to be more static because of this. Whether that's better or worse, I don't know. I think Aatrox was probably a little difficult to balance or... The other builds had to be problematic if they're nerfing them. They wouldn't be nerfing them if they were good. So I think Aatrox is probably just getting overall nerfed from this, but... It's returning him to his baseline, to his, like, normal build, so... I think Aatrox is sort of neutral from this. Slash, a little bit nerfed, but... Not nerfed for his main build, nerfed for any other build, so you're basically gonna have less fun on Aatrox, is what I'm thinking. Akali! I think Akali sucks ass, except in pro play. I hate this champion, I loved her old kit, but we're never gonna get that back, because it was too simple. Same thing with Katarina. So let's see what they're doing. Counting for how difficult Akali is to play, she shouldn't be anywhere near a 50% win rate across multiple skill brackets. That is kind of true, as we expect less skilled Akali players to bring down her win rate pretty heavily. To address this, we're specifically targeting her burst damage from E. Wow, which lands much more frequently in lower MMR play. See, that's crazy. What? Wow. I feel like the E should be, like, highly incentivized. Or at least put the other... Like, take away the damage from the E, but put it somewhere else in their kit, but... Either way, total damage. Uh, let's see how bad they're nerfing this. So they're going from... Oh my god, it's going down by 100 base damage. Wow. The AD scaling is going up though, and which doesn't really matter. And the AP scaling is going down. So this is a net nerf, let's be real. The first hit of a Kali's Shira can flip deals 30% of the ability's total damage, and the second hit does the remaining 70. Wow. Holy shit. Kali's worse. <laughs> Not too much worse, but worse. Akshan, again, the worst AD in the game, the worst scaling AD in the game, allegedly, and that's because they really have to bounce around the resing mechanic. So let's see what they're doing. Our last Akshan nerf didn't move him much as we wanted, We and now he's even stronger due to the new Kraken. Wow. We're taking a much more direct approach to the nerfs this time. Damn. So the passive, aka the three-hit passive, is now going down base damage... By, uh, so it's going up early, down later, and it no longer has an AP scaling. Not that it should, but um, I don't really think Akshan builds much AP anyway. So aside from you getting Baron, this really shouldn't matter. It is a little bit of a net nerf later because you're losing 15 damage, but it's not too, too bad, I would hope. Now the E, the damage per shot, which I think the E is probably like Akshan's hardest ability to use, like to get right and actually do a lot of good with it. It's very risky. Granted, you do get the reset, but that's if you do it well. I'm really hesitant about them nerfing the in any significant way, so let's see. The damage per shot is going down by 10, which actually matters. Unlike the passive, which you have to hit three times to get, either with the ult, the E, or the Q, uh, or just autos, right? The passive kind of... It's okay to nerf it a little bit, because it doesn't happen too often. But nerfing this, where each shot is lowered, I think this is a little... uh. So how much are they lowering it? They're lowering it by 10, which does does hurt. You know, it definitely does hurt. And they're nerfing the AD scaling. <clears throat> they're making it from bonus to total, which I don't really want to do the math to see if that's better or worse, but Akshan seems a little bit uh, worse for wear. But I think, uh, you know, obviously Riot wants to balance him around the res mechanic so that he can't really be strong, because if he is, then that's really overpowered. So he's a little bit worse, and I think that's fine. He's a mid laner anyway, so I don't really care about him. Ash. So I don't understand why Ash is doing so good. I did play some Rift recently, not a lot because again, there's no pass out, but I saw that Ash was one of the best ADCs and Ash is always a weird one. She can always build a myriad of things. Ideally, she should build crit. She should be a heavy crit ADC because her passive really, really hard scales off of it. <clears throat> but this is where Ash builds some other bullshit like Trinity Force, Wit's End, On Hit Terminus, you know, uh, there's a lot of different things you could do with Ash that I don't understand why, and that probably means the character's really fucking good. So let's see what they're doing. Ash is quite stronger now thanks to the ionization changes as she's not really bound to crit chance, which I thought she was. 
Where nerfing her sustained damage in a way that incentivizes buying crit again and makes her early game all ends less powerful. So let's see. So damage against targets with frost, aka when you W them or when you auto them once already. So it is going to 115, so they're nerfing her just straight damage. And uh, that's about it. They're nerfing it by 5%. I think that's fine. Uh, excuse me. Because this now really does incentivize you to build more um, more crit, aka Infinity Edge. Because if you don't have Infinity Edge, this isn't really going up that much. Either way, Blitzcrank. I cannot imagine a world where Blitz gets nerfed again. If they do, I will be shocked. But let's see. Our previous Blitzcrank nerfs didn't take enough steam out of Blitz. Wow. So we're hitting him again. What? We're averting the passive change as had no impact and going more directly for the durability this time. I feel like Blitz is so bad, though. We're keeping Blitz's baseline damage intact so that they could still be lethal. Oh, my God. But we want to make sure it's easier to punish overextending or getting caught in exchange. So this is the weird thing with Blitz, right? If you do what you're supposed to on Blitz, you should win. But if you don't do what you're supposed to on Blitz, aka land the Q, you should pretty much lose. Now... This is where I think Blitz already has it hard. As one of the few champions in the game where mana actually matters for him. And if you miss, you are very heavily like punished for it. I'm very shocked that they're still nerfing him. Because it's just a grab, man. Like, there's no way. Like, you know, you really just got to play around and just get good. I, I don't know. Maybe Blitz is really a menace because of his base stats being too high, his damage being too high. I don't know. But the rest of his kick can't really function unless you grab or unless the enemy misplays and doesn't position right. Our previous blitz crit. Okay, no, I already read that. Um, so let's see. His health is going down. His passive duration is going up. This is interesting. So I actually think this is a good change. I think making him just baseline squishy is fine, and making his passive last ten seconds is better. If they kept the passive nerf and nerfed his base health, I would have been like, wow, that's crazy. I think this is just a shift. I think this is making it so he's a little bit more risque. But you know, he has the pa as long as the passive is up, he should be okay kind of because it lasts longer four seconds is really not that long i mean in the team fight it is but 10 seconds is way more than enough time i think this is fine and they're just nerfing self i think it's fine okay let's get to corky so i've played a little bit of corky but i'm a little confused to him i'm gonna be honest so this is where on paper as far as i could tell right now the biggest thing that puts a monkey wrench in all of this for my testing for my thinking from everything is that one of the corky's main things got nerfed and that's the items that build with sheet typically the best start for him would have been either trinity or it would have been essence reaver and i think essence reaver more because he scales better off crit with the new bot lane returning corky quote unquote but because they changed all the build paths and because sheen is a little weird now with what you build it into i feel like corky even though on paper he should be really good it feels a little awkward to play him now i still think he's really good i think the e change is really really good he literally just has i think what is it 15 or 20 percent just straight extra true damage which is insane on every auto it's wild but he needs to scale but i honestly think corky is really fucking good i really do like i'm just so like sad his build got changed at the same time he finally almost became viable but i honestly don't know if he's good if he's bad i think he's bad from what i saw from the win rates and everything but i really think corky should be um should be a little bit more better personally but let's take a look at what they're doing base ad decreased attack speed growth increased q damage increased cooldown decreased e damage decreased armor and mr shred cap decreased mana cost increased wow i really like the e the e was so strong but they nerfed it so let's see Corky's rework was intended to make him an easy-to-play early game lane bully. So far, it's been successful. However, the degree to which he's an early game lane bully is too much. And that is honestly one of the parts because of first strike, I believe. Uh, so he's much too severe of a bully, which is crazy. Especially concerning his early burst of his E-Max Lethality builds. Because it's already shredding arm, and if you're building Lethality too, you're essentially just like mouth-fucking them. So we're making some adjustments to lower his early burst. He has a ton of s to spare. And max Q and E max viable alternatives. Okay. Corky is strong, but not particularly overpowered from what we can see so far, which I think is crazy. We're making some light nerfs and power adjustments. So I'm glad that they're leaning more into his basic attacks. I think that should be the premier. He is kind of a, a spell slinger, similar to Lucian, but also with Lucian. Lucian does a good bit of, of uh, you know, damage with his abilities, but his, his autos are also really fucking strong too. And I want Corky to be the same way. Corky and Lucian. 
and almost as real, but not really as real as in his own little boat. But Corky and Lucian definitely share a very similar leash in my eyes. But anyway, his base AD is going down by three. That's going to fuck with some CSing really hard. Attack speed growth is going up, which I really like. I like him autoing more, especially later in the game when he's getting that 20% extra true damage. The Q is going from base damage increase to also an AP increase, which I think is kind of nasty. I don't think you should build AP on him, but you probably could. Even though they took away a lot of his AP scalings on other stuff because they want him ADC, but uh, you know, it is what it is. But the base damage is up by 20, that's not bad. And then the Gatling, this is what I'm scared of. So the physical damage is getting nerfed by 20 and the armor MR shred cap is going down by four late, which is not too, too bad, honestly. And then the mana cost is going up, but that's fine. I think, honestly, Corky is fine after this. This is fine. And the cooldown of the Q is going down by one second, too. I think this is personally A-OK. -okay. I think Corky works best with, ironically enough, people like Blitzcrank, Thresh, Alistar. Very aggressive supports. Because as long as you can set stuff up to where Corky lands everything, I don't think there's many ADs who can really outbox him, especially if he has everything up. Because he just has so much. Like, it's actually crazy. But, um, yeah, I think Corky's going to be fine. Oh, look, Ezreal. What a surprise. What do I think of Ezreal? Ezreal sucks cock. If Ezreal's good, that means ADC as a whole is bad, or Ezreal is overpowered. One of the two. Ezreal is such a different AD, and I'm talking about traditional crit auto-attacking ADCs. If Ezreal is good, something is wrong, for the reasons I just listed. So, if Ezreal's weak, obviously he needs to be at a baseline, because they really want to sell his, like, 20 fucking skins. But, um... You know, Ezreal is really, really bad. Especially, I think, again, similar to Corky with all the item changes, especially with Sheen. So let's see what they're doing. Ezreal is quite weak after 14.10's itemization changes. He's doing about 4% less damage per game than he used to do. Oh, big whoop. With all his other stats being roughly similar, we're increasing his ability to put out more damage, especially in late game. Wow. So his attack damage growth is going up by a little bit. His damage on his Q, his bread and butter, is going up by 10% for total AD. Okay, that's not bad. And then his True Shot Barrage, the base damage, is going up by 75. Hmm. Not bad. No scaling damage, it's just base damage. Honestly, yeah, Ezreal's going to be doing a little bit more damage. I wouldn't be surprised if they added back the 4%. Ezreal is uh, probably going to be decent. He should be baseline. I think Ezreal should be a baseline AD, maybe a little bit good if you're good at him. He definitely has a decent amount of skill expression. But overall, I feel like Ezreal, uh, again, if he's good, something's wrong with crit ADCs. <clears throat> anyway, Karma. I hate how often this character gets touched, but that is because she's a jack of all trades. And if you're a jack of all trades and you're too good, that means you're doing too many things too well. But then again, if you're not doing anything well, then you suck dick. Karma is a little interesting. A jack of all trades characters are very interesting to balance around. That's all because she doesn't have like a actual ultimate she just buffs like her ultimate moves it's kind of similar to heimer but not really either way what do we think of karma i hate karma by the way karma is still quite weak but as her strongest role is currently support we have a lot of room to buff her without mid lane karma becoming problematic oh we'll see about that we're still being because mid lane karma is so toxic oh my god we're still being cautious though i'm focusing on her supportive aspects only stronger shielding and better bonus movement speed regardless of who she targets interesting so the shield value is going slightly up. The bonus move speed is lasting for longer. The defined shield bonus is going slightly up as well. And the secondary, the secondary target bonus, aka the ulted bonus, is also matching with the regular one. These are tiny little buffs. I don't think this is too crazy. Maybe it is, but I doubt it. Master Yi. So this is interesting. What do I think of Yi? Um, Kausep said... Because I've been hearing Kalsup here and there, the premier Yi player who knows Yi like no one else. Kalsup said Crit Yi's back. If Crit Yi's back, that means Yi's probably too strong. Because generally speaking, and I personally believe this, that Assassin Yi sucks dick. If that's strong, he's overpowered. Yi's primary build that should be viable is probably hybrid tank damage on hit. And if that's not the case, then I think Yi's probably too strong, or people are very much going to complain because that is easy mode Yi. And even then, with on hit hybrid tanky i think even that could go into op styles but that should be his baseline of like if nothing else is good that should be good if everything else is bad and that's bad then there's an issue but i don't think that's the case i think he's sort of a middle ground obviously he pub stomps lower elos higher elos you get shit on but you know that's the nature of the character but let's see what they're doing i'm curious 
We slightly overshot Master Yi's buffs last patch, and with the goal to nudge him towards being a strong beginning jungler, the round of nerfs is targeted mostly as more difficult and elite skewed outputs, like the short duration damage reduction on Meditate. Wow! That's one of the few skill expressions Yi's has. That's crazy. So the bonus damage to monsters on Q is going down by 10. That doesn't matter. At least for later, it doesn't early. I guess it kind of slows him down a little bit, but I doubt by a decent amount. Maybe at most by one auto, but I guess that matters. But the W, the initial damage reduction is going from 90 to 70, which is a little sad. And then the cooldown is going up. Wow, they are... I don't want to say hard nerfing W, but that's a decent slap. So Yi, if you're really good at him, you're going to be a little bit worse, regardless of what you could do. See, I hate when they take away the skill expression. 90% is kind of crazy, though. Especially if he gets going, but I think any more nerfs than this would be a little bit egregious, but this is okay, I guess. Okay, Nefiri. I actually low-key really, really like Nefiri. I think Nefiri is very cool. I think I really like the idea of Nefiri. I'm sad she wasn't more of a bleed champion, even though she has the bleed on her Q. And I played Nefiri a lot in Arena, and I actually like her whole gimmick. I like the pack mates. I like summons. I like people like Azir, Corky, Malzahar a little bit to an extent. I like things that do the work for me. Excuse me. And Nefiri is probably one of the premier people for that. But her thing is weird, because originally, I thought she would be a jungler. Then it turned out she was, I guess, a mid laner. But she's also played top. It's very weird. And I think that she hasn't really... She's either not too good or kind of just, I think, run of the mill. She's not terrible. But I think just assassins just aren't that good. I'm, I'm going to be honest. But... I could definitely see room for Nefiri being buffed. Maybe not in Arena, but definitely in regular Rift. She feels way better in Arena, by the way. But anyway, what are they doing? Packmates AD increased, Q, execute, and heal conditions changed, and cooldown reduced early. Wow. When Nefiri was released, we intended for her to be an easy-to-learn mid lane assassin, which is why she has a point-and-click W that gets on you. From the very start, players who have been trying to play her in the jungle. Wow. But she's been critically weak there, no doubt. We're still committing to her mid lane as Nefiri's primary role. So we're giving her buffs there, but the primary goal of this patch is enabling Nefiri jungle. Okay, so they're going to play her jungle even more now. Similar to the Olaf and Silas changes earlier this year, and then what they did to Darius and Garen as well. Early pack mate damage, Q cooldown, some rule updates should help make her more forgiving and faster in the jungle. So this is where I think it's one of the few instances where players won. As we saw it before with Karma, right? They don't want mid lane Karma. We saw it before with Aatrox where they don't want other builds with Aatrox. League, for some reason, or Riot, I guess in this sense, for some reason, likes when certain champions have freedom, but other champions cannot have that freedom. And I don't know why. But eventually, if you have players like the Nefiri players, they could just straight up force it. This is very rare, but this is, uh, this is crazy. I guess, you know, Riot knows like, hey, you guys want to have fun with the champion? We're barely ever going to give her a skin anyway, so here, just take these. <laughs> but either way, let's see. <clears throat> so her passive. Oh my god, it's getting doubled early. I mean, you know, it's not that much, 6 to 12, but early this stuff matters. And her bonus AD is going up. Wow. So the pack mates hopefully are doing a little bit more damage. And at the base level, they are doing double. Although double of 1 is 2, it's still double. So Q, the Darkened Daggers. What are they doing? Um, okay, so 37 base level versus minions and non-epic monsters. Okay, heal on bleeding target, champion only. So now it's changed to champion and large epic monsters. So now she, pretty much from this, can fully jungle, honestly. She can now heal and bleed them. This is amazing. This is great. And she executes, which is crazy. Uh, and the cooldown is going down early because that's what she needs for jungle. She needs a little cooldowns. This is really good. I think the Fury Jungle is actually thriving because of this. Now we have not only an alternative, but probably what a lot of people are probably going to do. Because I feel like Nefiri mid is kind of hard. If you fuck up and you're an assassin, assassins just personally aren't good. But I think assassins should be more junglers than anything personally. They can go mid, but I don't know. Mid for me is more for mages. And if you go mage versus assassin and you're not good as the assassin, you're just going to get rolled. But I think this is good for Nefiri. There's nothing bad. This is great. Nila, I hate this ADC. This is basically their response to, oh, you want to play Yasuo bot? Okay, take Nila instead. And not many people liked her, but she's so weird. I fucking hate her. Her and Akshan, I think, are kind of missed opportunities in my eyes because Akshan's a mid laner. And Nila, or sorry, did I say Nefiri? Nila is, um, I don't know. I just don't like her whole gameplay, her whole gimmick. It's just really hard to play her, like... Why would you play melee in a ranged matchup unless you're Yasuo where you're massively, massively mobile or counter the role entirely with the wind wall? 
like i don't know neela's skill she does a lot but it's so painful to lane with her especially with the nature of the bot lane the culture of the bot lane unless you have a good duo where you could do good with uh neela at that point you could do do good with anyone if you have a good duo but to go into solo queue with neela i feel like is just asking for torture this champion is so hard and just requires so much coordination with your with your other teammate it's so weird i really don't like her at all but what are they doing Neil is a bit weaker than we think she should be as a result of being forced to play a quite bursty build and rely on enchanters. Wow. By raising her baseline and stability, she have a nicer laning phase. I think her laning phase just absolutely sucks dick. Her health regen's up, her armor growth is up. She's slightly better, but I still hate this character. Rek'Sai. I don't know what they're doing with Rek'Sai. Rek'Sai, they changed a bunch of times because Rek'Sai was really weird. But um, I think Rek'Sai's probably in a decent spot. But let's see. Rek'Sai is brawling with the best of them, but currently her damage comes out a bit too fast. Wow, because I, I guess they overbuffed her because she was weak for a while, even after the big changes they did. So they kind of overshot. So let's see what they're doing. Her bonus attack speed is going down by 10. That's going to sting. And her W on Burrow is now going down by 20 base, which is fine because it's AoE. I think this is fine. Skarner. Okay, Skarner is interesting. So I really don't like the new Skarner. And this is the sad part. A lot of the quote-unquote reworks... I end up liking the old champion a little bit better than the new one. I think Skarner just is definitively better, except for his ult. But everything else in this kit I think is definitively better. Just for his uh, health in the game. I think old Skarner, while he was fun, I think he, old Skarner was more fun, honestly. I think uh, it was more feast or famine. I think this Skarner is just all around better. But I don't really know, because apparently he was really strong, but I think he feels like shit. Either he's hard to play or, or God knows what, but... I don't know what you're supposed to do on him. I don't know if you go full tank, if you go fighter, bruiser. I don't know. I don't fully know even the difference between fighter and bruiser, I'm going to be honest. But either way, uh, let's see what they're doing. Garner is too strong in higher MMR brackets. Wow. Both in top and in jungle. Top is insane. We're expecting there to be some elite skew to Garner, but he's also quite early game skewed as well, which is wild. I can't believe that. Which further pushes him towards high level play. We're making some adjustments. So what are they doing? His base health is down. His health growth is a little bit more... Oh, no, it's going up a little bit cool and his passive is now getting nerfed from 5 to 11 so it's worse early better late i actually am fully fine with that i think seven percent early was a little bit high this is okay i think scorn is fine talon this guy sucks dick talon has sucked dick for a while talon used to be one of the most lethal people in the game he used to be the guy who gets first blood or most likely to get first blood in a game but um I don't know. I think, again, just Assassin's Sub Dick, even with the lethality changes, those changes have mostly been uh, poached off by kind of some ADCs. Assassins have had time to, you know, do it well, but I don't know. Talon's is an interesting spot. I don't think he could be too good because he's really, really mobile, but I feel like just the cooldown of, of using the same wall should be enough. So maybe they just need a number to him. I don't know. But I do know he's not that good. Midtown has been having quite a bad time with jungle, or sorry, while jungle town has been just okay. And you know, another example of assassins being better in the jungle. whoop de doo We're adding a small buff on Q that both roles will enjoy while adding a little bit more damage to his rake to keep, or to help his consistent harass in lane. I think the Q way more helps the jungle and the rake helps everything. So let's see. Q cast time now scales with attack speed. That's more of a quality of life thing, but it's really appreciated. And then the rake, it's getting nerfed in the jungle, but the outgoing damage is going up by 10. That's fine. I think that's pretty good. I think you're honestly getting more damage with the base amounts anyway. So um, even though the jungle modifier is lost, I think you're still going to do more for both. Uh, Talon's pretty much the same, though. Not, not really much changing. Trindamir, one of the most simplest characters in the game. He is not like Ezreal, where if he's good, something's wrong. But if he's good... He's probably just over number buffed. Like, it's really, really hard to change Trinomir without either A, and by just bus buffing the buffing or nerfing the numbers, by the way. The way to actively change Trinomir in a big way is either, like, adding something or taking away something from his kit. And I can't imagine taking away anything because he barely has anything to begin with. But um, adding something to his kit, especially because his kit is so simple, almost constitutes something like, I would say, a mini rework almost. But not even a rework, like a... Uh a gameplay update almost but uh Trinomir is very simple you know he's a very simple character he either wins or he doesn't and uh i kind of like that he's like that we need to have simple characters in league 
So what are they doing? They buffed him before, from what I remember. So they might be rolling back on those, or they might not might not be strong enough. I think they're probably gonna roll back on some of it because Trinomir is a I just win harder kind of guy. He really just kind of stat checks you, and he has luck, which is never fun to go against. And from what I remember, that's actually what they buffed. They buffed like the Fury because they didn't like how the crit changes uh, dropped because of the changing crit values and all that. So. The random amount of Fury, or sorry, the random crits you get from Fury paired with, I think, the buff damage he does is probably going to lead to him being frustrating to play against. So, realistically, they're probably going to nerf him. Let's see. Trinomir's passive got stronger in 14.10, and now he's a landing monster who takes over games very quickly. That is true. Where targeting is extremely strong early game, almost on par with Pantheon, if not better, in my opinion. With these changes, as it makes him a pushing lane bully that doesn't have to care about anything else. So, what are they doing? The Q is going down by 5, that's fair. And then the E is going down by 5. Trinomir is the same, let's be real. TF! Okay, so after they made ADTF viable, and not just viable, but a little bit better than AP, IMO, they nerfed it, and then we haven't heard from him since. So what are they doing? Twisted Fate currently has two strong builds and rolls, with top being slightly stronger. Wow. We're tapping down both rolls slightly with the nerf skewed towards top lane, specifically around how we'll have to manage his mana by having to use more blue cards. That's interesting, so I guess they're just nerfing AD again. But let's see. His attack damage growth is going way down. Wow, that's a significant uh, amount of IMO. His Q is getting a little bit less. The base damage is the same, though, so that's good. 5%, little nerf, not bad. And then the W, the mana cost is going up early by a decent amount wow but the restored amount is going up as well for blue card because it kind of has to honestly i don't really understand this change they just want to nerf adtf they want him out of top lane they don't want people to have fun with him i don't think he's necessarily op uh excuse me because it says he has strong builds i think atf is strong not because of his builds but because of his kit at least at the current moment i'm not saying his builds can't be strong but i don't think they're oppressive or, you know how much they nerfed it especially the ad build so i think it's just his natural kit that makes him good especially top lane being a long lane and him being a you know by the books roamer especially once six hits um i don't know i don't really like this change it's not i don't think this is for him being strong i just think they just want him out of top lane because of the nature of his kit personally i don't know if this is gonna help though but let's see arcane trailer just dropped oh great i have to react to that too now Victor gets a quality of life buff to celebrate. That's hilarious, but I like that. I honestly think that is a good idea too. I, I have certain things when it comes to balance, right? I'm, I'm no professional by any means, but I think everyone should get their time of the sun. There should be seasons where people are good, people are bad, but everyone should get their play or their part in the play. And especially when certain things outside of League are going on. Let's just say I watch Arcane and I think Victor's so cool. I go to League and somehow I learn it and I'm not dissuaded by the toxicity and I like Victor, I want to see Victor being strong, and I think Victor should be strong, especially when Arcane is out. Now, does that really, uh, is that a good thing? Yes and no. I mean, it depends what your view is. For a money-making perspective, I think it's amazing. For a quality of the game, especially in a pro perspective, I don't think it's too, too good. It's a little uh, volatile, but, you know, money first, pro later. Even though pro, I think, doesn't really make the money. I think they lose money on pro play, but I'm not sure. With all the sponsors, they probably make it back. But either way, this is good. Uh, Victor's empowered auto attack now applies on towers. It really is a quality of life change, but it is a buff. That's pretty good. Victor's slightly better. Uh, Victor's kind of old school too. I feel like Victor is good, but he's like an old school type of mage. Anyway, Vladimir. What are they doing to Vlad? Vlad is interesting. I really, really miss old Vlad, but it's a similar thing. I actually don't hate new Vlad. But old Vlad, where he hit everything and things couldn't be blocked, I liked way, way more, aka the old E. The old E I thought was so much better. You had to actually manage it, similar to Rumble Heat. I miss old Vlad so much. New Vlad is not bad, though. New Vlad is, and I say new as if it just happened. It happened years ago. Current Vlad is pretty good, but I think he just takes a while to scale, and before he scales, he's kind of useless. So if people come online before him, they could kind of shut him out of the game. So I think the early game is really the issue with Vlad because it's definitely not his late game. Good lord, what that is. Let's see what they're doing. Vlad has been relatively weak across the board and kept having a poor performance compounded by recent seasonal changes and overall faster game pace. 
He's pretty sensitive to kit changes and hasn't received the buff in a long time, so we're dusting off the old Sanguine Pool and making it less punishing to cast. Wow, I feel like this is uh this is gonna be interesting. Let me let me see what they're doing first. So current health cost is going from 20 to 15. Healing is going from 15 to, to 30, so they're doubling that. The bonus health ratio, I guess for the damage it does, I think, is going up by five percent okay well so they're kind of i don't want to say giga buffing w but they are buffing it very well so this is the whole issue though the nature of ws ability is if you use this you feel naked you feel like your pants are down in the desert and you're being surrounded by vultures because like vlad essentially has almost nothing so if you w aggressively i don't think anyone w's aggressively unless they know they or in their mind they know they're gonna get the killed guaranteed like it's a way to confirm things it's not a way to be aggressive normally you wouldn't use this unless you have to or unless you're securing a kill in my opinion now to change this and Vlad is actually an interesting case this is where in the past and i know this from watching um riot august stream riot august is one of the i think lead designers or lead creators at, at riot basically he makes the champs and he buffs and nerfs them i think a little bit but he knows a lot about league he's he's as historical as i am realistically and he said vlad was supposed to get nerfed there was an era where vlad was like very meta he was supposed to get nerfed they nerfed him but they forgot to ship it from live but because people thought he was nerfed they engaged on him more and vlad does really bad with all ends especially early and vlad basically got molly whopped even though he never really got nerfed so vlad is an interesting case because of his kid now granted i believe that was old vlad not new vlad but um i think vlad is interesting because if you decide to shift his play style to where you're way more incentivized to attack with w than defend i think people will probably unless it's really op right unless like it really helps you guarantee the kill by a big margin i really feel like this could lead to people being worse on vlad i mean at the end of the day if they play the same nothing changes the w is stronger but if they incentivize this type of very risky gameplay it could be better but most of the time it will be worse because people suck dick but either way, this is a straight buff, but I'm just a little scared on, will this actually help? I feel like the W should never be used in a way aggressively, but if it is, I guess you should get a decent bit of reward out of it. Because it is such a feast or famine ability in terms of like, it is a very strong defensive ability, but it's his only ability. So it's it's very, very important you use this correctly. So I guess using it aggressively should have a, a reward attached to it. So Vlad is ultimately better, but I'm a little scared. Yone! What do I think of Yone? I honestly don't know. I don't really see him. Him and his brother. Yone's having a tough time right now, so some of his suboptimal runes, half the players are running Legend Haste instead of Legend Alacrity. Wow. And some of this is due to being a little too squishy. Wow. So his base armor is going up, and the less you have, the more it matters. So Yone's a little bit better. Yumi! Okay, I'm shocked. We didn't see a Kassan change here. I'm actually very surprised. Usually we always do, but I guess Kassan might be under control, and Yumi has been tamed for a long time now, so I'm very curious to what they're doing with her. Yumi has been a bit weak for a while now. Damn fucking straight after all they did to her, which they should have. Yumi as a champion is so weird. They wanted a very easy support where you can essentially AFK, and they basically got that. <laughs> but it was too good for a long, long time. Similar to Kassan. But anyway, the recent system changes definitely didn't do her any favors in order to help her out help her besties better looking to make her landing phase less punishing by removing some of the restrictions on her shield so let's see this shit so the e cooldown is 10 seconds to all rank that's pretty cool and then the final chapter the heal per hit is going up by 10 this is whatever yumi's whatever let's be real lord doms let's see what they're doing similar to static shiv we're making lord doms build path a little smoother since we generally like where the items have smooth build paths so they are now adding in Noon Quiver, and they're taking out the Cloak of Agility. So Noon Quiver, I believe, also builds from uh, Crit, so this is fine. This is, uh, yeah, it's just more smooth, literally. Okay, so Noon Quiver, we've taken a pretty firm stance on keeping Epic Item Gold Efficiency under control. Noon Quiver slipped through the cracks. Yeah, because the shit gives Crit. So what are they doing? Um, attack damage is going down. But it still builds out of crit. But, um... Wait, so what's the difference? Cloak of Agility is there. Longsword is there.
Oh, there's two long swords. I'm stupid. I, I my mind couldn't register that. Okay, cool. So a little bit of a different build and less damage. So it's pretty nerfed. Wow. Especially because this is like an early item, typically. Scout's Slingshot. I forgot this item exists. Scout's Slingshot is currently one of the weakest epic items in the game. No duh, it's very new too. We're making some adjustments to make it nicer. So what are they doing? Uh, so rapid fire camera nons and stack shifts total gold are unchanged, but this thing is going down in cost. Interesting. Um, I don't think this really matters, but for them to buff it means this thing really did suck. Static. I really just don't like how static just can't crit, but um, I barely see anyone build it when I did play. Again, I don't play too too much, but I just don't like static man. Until they make it crit, I I'm not gonna like it. Static Shift is a pretty powerful item right now. I don't even know who builds this, but we expect it to take some time for players to adopt it into their builds. That's true, because, again, I don't know who the fuck builds this. It's currently looking competitive on Zeri, who's terrible, Sivir, who's pretty bad, Kaisa, who's good but builds not this, and Kale, who doesn't really see the light of day. And we'll wait to see who else picks up over time to make this adoption a little easier. We're smoothing out the build path. So they are smoothing out, so I'm not really going to go over that. Void Staff is getting 10% AP, or sorry, 10 base AP, so that's cool. Crypt Bloom has been overshadowing Void Staff for most of the season, which is crazy. I guess MR isn't really that crazy anymore, but wow. Because Void Staff really should be for, like, I'm going to shred you. Crypt Bloom should be for, I want to heal my team, I want to support them. Void Staff should be, like, I want to do more damage to tanks. And I guess it really doesn't fulfill that niche somehow. I don't even know how, but... They're buffing its AP, so that's cool. Cerilda's Grudge... So with the recent changes to Lord Doms and Black Lee, we want to make sure Cyril does with competitive armor penetration. Uh, we're picking up to buff the flat value here. So the flat armor pen is scaling. Oh my god, it's going from 20 to 25, and it's still scaling with lethality. I didn't even know it scaled with lethality. That is fucking crazy. I think this item is low-key sleeper good. I didn't think it needed a nerf, personally. And why I didn't say anything at the beginning, because I really don't, don't really have too much of an opinion on this time, other than I thought it was good. But wow, I'm shocked it's getting buffed. First Strike, this thing is ultimately getting nerfed because a lot of people are abusing it. First Strike is quite powerful. The flat gold changes back at 14.10 over buff the rune. So they are nerfing it 15 to 10, 8 to 7. That's fine. I'm a little sad for the damage of amp. The gold's fine. The damage amp, I'm a little sad about. Anyway, updated recommended runes. They're updating Yone. They're updating Seraphine, Draven, Talon, Karma, Zweed, De Blanche, Cat, Zoe, and GP. Cool arena so i actually really want to go through this let's see i think arena is probably it really should be a permanent game mode like dear god it is so good for the casuals like i don't want to get into a game of rift where i'm being called slurs and i have to farm and stuff arena takes out farming so it's less skill um strict i would say and it's really just getting you into the action if you get builds quick there's a degree of randomness i think arena is one of the gems of league and i really am excited for their pve game mode i hope they hit another gem but I really hope Arena is here to stay, man. Because once the pass comes out, I would love to keep playing Arena. I just wish you could get mastery from it and you could get chests from it too. But so far you can't, but that's a little sad. But either way, what are they doing? We've heard they could be frustrating when there's a champion you don't like to play against. But through a random chance, you didn't get a ban. I think that's fair, though. We still feel that a full 16 bans is too restrictive, especially if you are the second pick. We recognize this pain or tweaking Arena's ban system. But with a slight twist, as of this patch, we'll be moving to a blind ban system, meaning that you will see your allies ban, but you won't see any other teams ban. Oh, so they could overlap. This means that everyone can ban a champion of their choice while also ensuring that if your favorite champion is a popular one, it isn't locked out of every game. I don't know about that. I don't know about that. All players can now receive their own ban. Bans are blind across all teams. This allows duplicate bans if multiple teams choose the same champion. So basically, good luck having a popular champion. They're going to get insta-banned. Wow. The ban reveal phase has been removed. Pick timer has been adjusted from 30 to 35. Ban display UI has been updated. Wow. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like now giving all players the ability to ban, I think this overall will lead to probably the same people banning a lot of the same things because you don't know what's banned and what's not. But in the worst case scenarios, which shouldn't be too often, you will have more champions banned than before. But I think this is a good change making a blind. Honestly, I think more often than not, this should probably help. But good luck playing a broken ass champion or a piece of champion. But either way, this should be honestly better. And they're doing balance adjustments, but I don't care to read all this because it's a lot. Holy shit. Oh, they're buffing Aesol though. Huh. They're buffing Belveth. Wow. 
But either way, items, whoop de do arena quality life changes. So anvils and augments now show their corresponding tooltip. Multiple augments offerings have been adjusted. You can no longer purchase wordless promise if your ally already has one. Phenomenal evil now uses a per ability cast cooldown instead of a global cooldown. Wow. Uh, the lone screen's tinier player causes... Uh, okay, cool. So that's just bullshit. Um, okay, and then they're still doing ARAM, but barely. Because ARAM should be like the most unbalanced thing, in, in my opinion. Because it's that random. And then Clash Cup. I'm actually very excited for this. So... It's Arena Clash, thank God. Or, sorry, not Arena. Uh, Arena Clash would be crazy, though. It's ARAM Clash, my favorite Clash. I really wish and hope they do just, like, every week a different Clash. And here's where I think it would be, like, the perfect thing. Week one... Uh, excuse me. Week one, they do ARAM Clash. Week two, they do Rift Clash. Week three, they do Arena Clash. And then they, they restart. So week four, technically, of a month, you're going to go back to ARAM. So this would provide faster clashes, which might be a little bit of something they don't want because you do get actual rewards from this. But you can also spend money on the premium tickets. So not only could they make money, but they could also lose money because if you win, you are getting free skins. But um, I think not only do people want more clash, I think clash is really good. They only need to work on the player finder. Like the LFG in league client is terrible. You have to basically go onto a Discord or a from an LFG and from an exterior source, which is sad. But um, I'm very happy, and I, I just wish ARAM Clash happened a lot more often. But let's see what they're doing. So registration begins at June 10th, aka yesterday it opened. Tournament dates are June 15th and 16th. Now, this is interesting because when I looked at the tab, it was wrong. So there's two dates, right? There's two games, 15th and 16th. And I actually think based on how the Saturday goes, I might not be able to make that one. But I def definitely will make Sunday's one. Now, let's take a look really quickly. So, yeah, no, I don't want to create a team. Um, Where's the hub? So, yeah, look, it says day one is June 16th. That is false, though, because they're saying it's June 15th. So, oh, but it says it opens Saturday 17th. So, this might just be a... Uh... <laughs> A fucking typo. Billion dollar company typo. Wow, I'm surprised no one's seen that. But I did. But either way, let's go back to the patches because that's what we're here for. Um. Oh, wow, I actually kept my space. Look at that. So, yeah, ARAM Clash is coming back. Very happy about that. So, Champion Mastery. Hopefully, they let it. So, I know there was problems with Champion Mastery and ARAM. And I'll be honest, with the new Champion Mastery, it's a little confusing just looking at in the client how you get chests and stuff. It was way more easier with the old one in terms of just like understandability, if that's a real word, real word. And the fact that you can't do this in Arena is really sad. But let's see what they're doing. Since we launched the updated Champion Mastery system in 14.10, we've been keeping an eye on how it's landed with all of you. And while some parts were successful, like uncapping Mastery, which I think is a great thing, and the ability to unlock champ titles, which is good, it's clear that we missed the mark in other places. We're working on updates based on the feedback, such as revisiting the new mastery visuals and are going to take a bit more time. But this is the first of more changes to come, thank goodness. And make sure to check out the new dev update that dropped today for more details, which I will be doing right after this. So that's cool. We've seen player feedback about the bonus milestones for champion mastery being too difficult, which I think is true. But overall, you should be able to get more chests if you actually play the game than with the old system. It's just it's a little hard to understand that, but I think this is great. I I think the new system overall is better. It just needs some tweaking. Which, again, as much as I bash Riot, I bash them because I love the game. I think um, the one thing they always do is they listen. They listen and they change. Not to the extent we want, no. But look, right? They made Neferia jungler, so they are listening. A little bit. We, we just have to force them a little bit sometimes. But monetarily, or at least cosmetically, ugh, sometimes they just don't even listen with that. Now, the bonus milestone would only require three S grades instead of seven. Thank God, seven was insane. That was like a giga grind. By the way, Mythic Shop, we don't care. Bug fixes quality of life. Um, I'm not reading this bullshit. This is just bullshit. And then upcoming skins, which I already talked about. But Crystal Indomitus Zareth looks pretty cool. But it's hard to make cool skins for Zareth because this literally just looks like Dark Star. Like, looking at the splash art, I thought it was Dark Star just either with lightning, or I thought maybe it could have been, um, fairy port, honestly. But here we have the Risen LeBlanc skin, which you could get from the past, that is very, very worth it in terms of price. And then we have the two atrocities, Risen Legendary, which is, I think, again, $200, $300. And then the Immortalized Legendary, which is 
barely worth the extra price. Not, not, not even worth the extra price. What am I saying? And then you get the LeBlanc thing for free. But Crystallis and Dominus Zareth is nice. I just wish we had more... Because um, this is a gemstone skin. I just wish we had more um, variants in terms of the thematics. Because so far all we have is Crystallis and, you know, Crystallis whatever. Crystallis Modus, Crystallis um, Fatalis, whatever the fuck they call it. They do change the second name, but it's always Crystallis. And then before that, we had um, the Dark Souls, like one was the, Ashen. It was Ashen, I think. Because Pike was the forerunner of that one. But yeah, I would wish we got a little bit more variants with just the themes, but we really only have two. I guess if you like the theme, you're winning, but I just like variety, and we're not really getting much of that. But um, it could be a decent skin. Who knows? Either way, we have um, the Chroma, so that's cool. And we have all the crows for the old SKT skins as well that belong to the mid laner Feka. But uh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, this really looks like Darkstar, personally. Like, holy shit. But that is the patch. So overall, I would probably rate this one. This one wasn't terrible. The mini change is pretty interesting. It's not bad, although I don't want to factor that in too much. Uh, first Strike should have gotten nerfed, and it did. Static Shiv is still weird as fuck. This got smoothed out. New Quiver got nerfed, though. Okay. Just giving a big old look at it to give it a rating overall. Talon got buffed a little bit. Trend got nerfed a little bit. Okay, Skarner is weird. Rek'Sai is weird. Nothing really stands out too bad here. Like, there was nothing terrible. The Fury got the jungle. You got nerfed, but, you know, it's understandable a little bit. Karma's weird. Honestly, this is kind of like a nothing patch. Like, nothing really crazy happened in here. Ash got nerfed, which is kind of sad, though. But, um... Yeah, I don't know. This is like... Oh, God, I really want to, like, put this into the... Into the reasoning of, like, my grade. But, um... I really want to exclude it. Ugh! Okay. I think, overall... I have to take it in totality, so I do have to include the skins, too. I think overall, just because of these skins, I was going to rate it a 5 out of 10 Mark Morales. Pretty just average. Like, no one cares. I don't care. It's not really changing anything. But um, I think overall, not just looking at bounce, looking at the skins as well, it's probably a 4.5 out of 10 Mark Morales. It's a little bit of a sour taste in my mouth again because of the slippery slope they're going with all these skins that are not for the common populace anymore. This game really, like, it's not like Fortnite where Fortnite revolutionized things, but... They did kind of realize and they did kind of know, like, this game is off the backs of the common people, not the whales. Now, maybe now they're learning they could do it off the whales and fuck the common people, but that's bad for us, good for them. And that's not good. But, um, it's a slippery slope. We gotta wait and see, but I really hope, you know, there should be stuff for the whales, but if the current skins of Legendary and Ultimate didn't degrade in quality, I'd be more okay with the Sari skin coming out. But the fact that they degraded and the fact that the only good stuff is costing so, so much really really is like not okay with me but yeah overall i would rate this a 4.5 out of 10 mark merrill's i'm glad we made it under an hour i hope everyone enjoyed i'll be here hopefully in two weeks if i decide to stick around and keep hanging around but um i'm gonna go react to the dev update now so if you want to see that go look at my channel it should be out by the time you're seeing this hope everyone enjoyed eee!